Yeah. Well, hello and uh, welcome to this uh, talk about GProf and G, the next generation GNU profiler. My name is, uh, is indeed Ruud van der Pas. This is a joint work with uh, Vladimir Mazentsev. Vladimir is on the call, but I'll, I'll be uh, presenting. Um, we're both in the comparison tool, team, tool chain team that's part of the Oracle Linux engineering organization. And um, we're, we're deeply involved with uh, GProf and G, and we're very excited about the project. And we're very glad with the opportunity to, um, to share this for, um, yeah, with, with this audience. It's actually the very first time that we go public um, in a public presentation with GProf and G. So I have quite some slides, so let's get started. I will, I will uh, drop off the camera now. I find it a little bit too distracting while I'm presenting, but I'll be back uh, when we get to the Q&A part. So this talk is about GProf and G, and um, I want to uh, really get to the examples as soon as possible. So I'll have a brief introduction, uh, just a few slides, and then I'm going to show you as many examples as I can cram in in the time slot um, that we have. Um, I just wanted to point out that I, I don't have time to really go into details how we do things. Of course, we can always uh, get into that in the Q&A part. Um, there's also, uh, if you download uh, the repo, there's also a mini tutorial in tech info format that has a lot more detail than what I can possibly cover in this uh, presentation. Still, I hope it will give you a good idea of, uh, of what this tool is about. Uh, I will end with a very brief overview of um, our short-term direction. Um, this is, was a very exciting moment from, for us at August 11, so almost, I think, uh, six, uh, six weeks ago or so to the day. We, um, we, Vladimir sent this uh, mail to the uh, Bin Utils mail alias, and we formally sort of submit, submitted GProf and G for, um, for review. And uh, since then, we've been doing some updates, and we've had some very good uh, email exchanges with, uh, with people on the list. A little bit about the history of this tool. It actually has quite some history, um, but under a very different name. Um, it started with the Oracle Developer Studio Performance Analyzer. That's a very long word. That's uh, not our invention, but that's, um, that was called, usually shortly called the Performance Analyzer. It has been developed for over 20 years, uh, quite some users, both internal and external. Um, but the focus was on the Spark processor, the studio compilers, and the Solaris operating system. What we did, we sort of took the code base and, um, and started preparing it for, um, for the, the GNU environment. Um, so the first thing that we did was create a standalone version on Linux so that you don't have to uh, install all of the whole studio environment. This is just a standalone installation and um, you don't need anything else other than the supporting libraries, of course, and tools that we need. But you don't need anything from Studio. We also adapted the source code to the GNU coding standards as, um, in, as, as much as we, we can, and uh, we try to be very compliant with that. We adapted the build process um, to be compliant with other bin utils components. A new element, uh, which is not in the original studio product, is that, we, um, that we're working on a port to ARM, and the first uh, support for ARM is, is in the tool now. Along the way, we fixed several bugs, and uh, we completely redesigned the, uh, the user interface. So what is GProf and G? Um, it collects and displays application-level performance data. In other words, it's an application-level uh, profiling tool. And we support um, C, C++, Java, and Scala. Uh, regarding compilers, we have full support for uh, GCC. And uh, regarding the hardware that we support, we support uh, various processors from Intel, AMD, and ARM. One of the key features of this tool is that you don't need to recompile the code. Uh, you don't even need to have the source code. Of course, when, when we have access to the source code, we can give more information but you can still get quite a lot of information even if you just have the binary. In general, uh, you can make um, profiles with your production binary. You don't need to recompile. So we're profiling exactly the same binary as that you're running in, uh, in your production environment. We also have full support for multi-threading. 
we support the POSIX threads, OpenMP, and, um, and Java threads. And I'll, I'll give a little bit of an example towards the end about that. So how does it work? It's a two-step approach. First, um, in the first phase, you collect the performance data um, you, using the target executable and any options and environment variables you need to set to, to run it. And then in the next phase, um, you'll display the data. And we provide information at various levels, including the function, source, and disassembly level. We provide um, multiple views into the data, so you can kind of slice and dice the, the data any way you like. And in my experience, I use the tool myself as well quite extensively. Uh, a single run can already give you a lot of insight. Some other features that we have, we have um, a scripting, uh, scripting support. So you can generate and customize the profiles in an automated way. And that's actually how I use it myself. I have a script and I generate the profile. And um, then I use the, the tools to produce uh, tables with profile information. And I'll, I'll also in examples, I'll show you a little bit about, about that, how, how I do that. We have filters, so you can zoom in on the area of uh, interest. And one of the features that I personally very, uh, like very much is that we um, have comparison of profiles. When you think about it, profiling is very often um, about comparing. You have um, a, a good run and a bad one, and you want to know why the bad run is bad or you're looking at a parallel code and you want to, you want to find out why um, the speed up is disappointing, for example. Um, I, I thought that this, this group may be interested in, in a, a very brief overview um, comparison with GProf. It's by far, um, it's not complete, it's not extensive. I just want to give you a feel for like what's different compared to the GProf that we all, all know. I've been using GProf for a long time. Uh, myself and um, um, so this is again take this with a bit of grain of salt just to give you an idea. Well GProf um, mostly uses instrumentation you have to uh, compile the code for the instrumentation uh, we don't do that uh, we use sampling and I have a slide on that uh, very soon to explain what we do um, so with GProf um, is it, if it hasn't been instrumented yet you need to recompile the source and as I already mentioned, we can just grab any uh, any executable. Um, GProf, um, like I said, I've been, I've been using it myself for quite some time, but uh, I think it has fallen behind somewhat in terms of uh, modern uh, architectures and software environments. So, for example, we have the full support for shared libraries and uh, multi-threading. Uh, I couldn't find much in terms of customizing GProf, while GProf and G is pretty flexible in terms of customization. Uh, I don't think GProf has any fi filters, certainly not the kind of filters that we provide. Um, you certainly can't compare profiles while we have that, and, and again, I, I'm going to show that. And I don't think you can, can uh, do any performance counter experiments with GProf while we support that. To be honest, um, we don't support the latest and greatest processors yet. That is high on our list. Um, the infrastructure is in the code to do event counter support, and we do uh, support processors like uh, uh, my examples have been made on the Skylake um, Sky Lake processor. But um, we do have some work to do there to uh, support more recent processors that have come out recently. So uh, sampling, this is um, in a very simple simple way, it's, it's somewhat of a simplification, how GProf and G uh, gets the performance data. You're running the program, and at a regular interval, which is by default 10 milliseconds, but you can change it um, if you, if you uh, up and down, if you like. We stop the program, we record all sorts of information that we find interesting, including, of course, the program counter, and uh, we store that in a directory and at some point uh, when we're done, we, with the display tools, you, you read that information and it allows us to produce an overview of where the time was spent um, and other things. Um, this is sampling. So uh, the downside compared to instrumentation of sampling is, is that you will see variations even if you run exactly the same job because it's statistical sampling. Um, in my experience, the variations are very small. Um, and I haven't had any problem with that. You can always increase the, um, the frequency of the sampling if, if it's not high enough. 
the one thing that you that may happen with sampling if you have a tiny function you might miss it so um, in those cases i would definitely recommend a higher sampling rate than the default okay about let's get practical about the um, the command structure uh, all commands uh, start with uh, g prof and g then uh, we have a keyword that describes the functionality and depending on the keyword there may or may not be a qualifier needed and that's followed by the options on the command and and also on the program that you're going to uh, monitor and here are some examples if you want to collect the data uh, it's collect app and then followed by uh, options from the tool and then the executable that you want to monitor and again i'll, I'll show you examples uh, very shortly if you want to display the information that's in ascii format and that's um, that's the command line interface, um, display text. Another uh, tool that we have in this, um, in this um, suite is an archive tool so that you can, what you, we archive kind of like libraries and source code. So you can sort of package it up and in case the system configuration changes, you still have a snapshot of the system when you made the profile. Because meanwhile, if libraries have been updated, then uh, you will not get the right information anymore when we start reading uh, reading from those libraries. So the archive is, is meant for that kind of uh, purpose. Uh, altogether, we currently have five, um, five tools, five commands that we support. Uh, collect app to collect the performance data, display text to um, uh, display the performance data in ASCII format, the archive command I just mentioned, we have a, a simple tool that will take an um, object file and then display the source with the disassembly uh, interleaved. Quick check that you can do. Um, a tool in progress, I'm, I'm actively working on that now, is uh, to generate an HTML structure. Uh, so you get a directory with a bunch of HTML files and you can take a browser and navigate through the data. And um, that's, that's work in progress. It's currently sort of, a, an, a, it's there, but it's not very functional yet. Hopefully very soon that'll change. I uh, think I've given enough to uh, talk about um, the, the background. Let's look at some examples. I want to show you how to get a basic profile, uh, how to display the function source and disassembly information, a little bit about the customization. I want to show you an example of the scripting, uh, multi-threading and the comparison of profiles. Uh, before I continue, I do need to in, uh, explain uh, one in, important um, sort of concept in GProf and G, inclusive and exclusive metrics. Uh, that's, that's for simplicity, you assume the metrics is CPU time, you're collecting CPU time. The inclusive metric includes your certain point in the call tree, and the inclusive metric includes everything underneath. Everything else you're calling is all accounted, goes onto your accounting bill for that function. So that's the entire subtree. The exclusive metric is, is the pure time that you spend outside of calling other functions. And I have a simple example of that. Let's say this is a part of my call tree. So we have the orange function. The orange function calls the gray, blue, and pink one, and the blue one calls the yellow one. And the times shown there are the exclusive times. So seeing from the orange function, the inclusive time is everything added up. So the inclusive time for the orange function is 75, let's say seconds. The exclusive time is 10. Uh, the gray one and the pink one, they don't call anything else. These are called D functions. Uh, so the inclusive and exclusive time are the same. The blue one is calling the yellow one. So the inclusive time is 30 seconds and the exclusive time is, um, is five. So that's an important thing. You will see that in all the examples that I'm going to show, inclusive and exclusive time. So how do you get your profile? If, uh, if you normally run your program as shown in the green box and, and I wrote a, um, a matrix vector uh, code using POSIX threads, so it's a parallel code. And, in, and this is one way you run it with a certain matrix sizes and one thread and um, a one line output because um, this is a demo. So this is how I normally run my program. Then in the second box, I show you how you collect data. And all you do is you run the program exactly the same way you did before, but now under control of collect app. And that will do the sampling that I, um, that I just uh, described. 
um, you will get a, a line that's saying creating experiment database test of one dot er and then the process idea. First of all, I uh, I need to take away a concern, possible concern. Uh, we are from Oracle, but this is not a database that we generate, and it's um, it's on on our list to change that word. It's just a directory. It's a directory with a bunch of files that that are later on read when you do the analysis. So the word database, I think, is complete overkill here. It's some historic leftover that we need to get rid of. Uh, the important thing is um, th the name of the directory is by default test.1.er, and if you run the same, if you run another experiment, it, there will be a test.2 and so forth. And of course, those are default names, and you can change them with options and give give um, the experiment directory a more a, a better name that's more reflective of what you're doing. So now that we have collected our data, it's time to start displaying it. And um, I'm going to show you um, separate functionality, but you can lump it together all on the command line or in a script. So, so don't be misled by that. You can get all the information in one command if you want to do that. Here I'm asking for the function overview. So I'm using display text. Uh, the input is, um, is an experiment directory. By the way, uh, we support multiple experiment directories. You don't, uh, it can be more than one. Then we aggregate or compare the data depending on what you want. So I'm asking for the function overview and that's what I get on my screen. Um, I see the two columns with the exclusive and inclusive uh, CPU time and the name. And I color coded um, this thing called total in red because that's, um, that's a, a function generated by, uh, by the tool that, um, that, that, that sums up the total of the metrics. So you can put the other numbers in, into perspective. You can see how they relate to the total time in this case. You can um, get source level information. You use the source command, uh, you get the source lines. And the red color coding is mine. That's not, not done by the tool. There is a marker, those two uh, hash symbols um, uh, are there. So you, when you search in the file, you can easily find uh, the most time consuming uh, lines. We actually have a command as well to get the most uh, time consuming source lines and the most time consuming uh, instructions, if you like that. But here we show the full source and um, with the timing information. And likewise, you can get the disassembly. Again, the color coding is mine, um, but there is that marker to find the most expensive instruction in, the, in that source. We interleave when we have access to the source, and I, I didn't mention that yet. If you, if you have compiled your code with dash G, then we have access to the source code, and um, then we can show you the source code interleave with the disassembly. Otherwise, you'll just get the pure disassembly. We still do the disassembly, but you won't get any source code. A little bit about the customization, just to give you an idea. Uh, in a real application, you probably don't want to see all the functions, so we have a, a, an option to limit the output, the number of output lines, the number of functions we display. In this case, I limit it to five, so I get a more manageable output. I also, and that's an important one that I, I use quite a lot, uh, you can define your, the metrics you want to see. We record uh, several metrics and, um, and you define what you want to see. And if you don't do that, you get a default. In this case, I only want to see the exclusive times. So that's the E, the E there. And then the dot means that I get the absolute value. And I want to see the percentage and I want to see the total CPU. And now we have the blue column with the percentages added. And it shows that this uh, function MXV core is taking 95% of the total, uh, total time. Scripting, I've mentioned it a couple of times. That's, that's how I use the tool. I'm, not good, I'm a really bad typer and uh, I, uh, I always use scripts. And here's an example. You can have comments li comment lines in your script. And what I'm doing in the first blue line is I define the metrics that I want to see. And um, like standard, we put the name um, at the end. You can put it at, at first, as I was showing on the previous slide. You can, you can define which metric should be used for the sorting. Uh, I, I show the limit command here, and then I'm going to ask for the function list. So with that script, I get this kind of output. So I get the two columns with inclusive and exclusive and the respective uh, percentages. Um, 
I can customize the data collection process. Um, the Collect App uh, tool has quite some options uh, on it. Uh, one of the one you'll probably immediately start using is the dash O. The dash capital O will give a name to the experiment directory and um, um, with dash capital O, the, an existing experiment is overwritten. If you use a lowercase o, it will not be overwritten and you'll get a warning and the tool will bail out. So you won't lose your data if that's not what you want. So you can choose. So here I give a more expressive name to the experiment. There's one kind of sort of limitation that the experiment name needs to end with .er. And for a long time I thought that stood for error, but it means experiment recording. And it's one of those things that I'm not sure whether you know, we should keep that, but that's the current convention. So that's why all these names, uh, experiment directory names, always end with .er. You have other options you can set on it. One thing I like is you can add, um, here it says labels, but it's actually a comment string. So you can add up to 10 comment strings to the experiment, which you can later read back. So you can do some sort of doc documentation what the experiment was about. And I've mentioned the archiving a couple of times already. Multi-threading support. Um, I, here, I, in the first command, I generate a new experiment directory uh, running the program on two threads. And um, then when I use display text to analyze that information, I add a threads command, and that will give me an overview of uh, the CPU time for the various threads. It's a great way to find load balancing issues, for example. And here you see that uh, thread three and two, they roughly spend the same time. But thread one doesn't do much. And that's actually by design. It's the sort of the master thread that's in control of the program. It doesn't do any of the computation. So this is to be expected. But I find it a very useful command to very quickly detect any sort of load balancing issues you may have. Um, this all goes hand in hand with scripting and, um, and filters. So here's another script. And what I want to highlight here is that I can zoom in on certain threads. Here I show individual threads, you can have groups of threads, you can have any sort of uh, sequence of numbers. But here I want to have the display for individual numbers, thread one, two, and three. And this is what I get. Um, the red is, is shown that so that it confirms that, that you actually uh, get what you, what you thought you were getting. So it's telling me I get uh, the information from thread one out of the three. And likewise, for thread two and three, I get the information and I can do the, the comparison if I like. But we have a more advanced version um, feature to do the comparison. And here I'm showing the hardware counter experiment. Um, dash H, uh, LLM, me uh, measures the last level cache misses. And I do that uh, when running, when using one thread. And I do that for using, when using two threads. And now I, uh, I put my commands in the script. And the one thing I want to, uh, the script is shown at the, at the bottom here in the gray, uh, the gray box. And I, in red, I say comparison. The compare feature is on, so I enable the comparison. And I lo I'm loading two experiments at the same time. And now I get the side-by-side -side comparison and I get the absolute numbers. So I can very easily, in this case, compare uh, cache misses. Yep. Um, but often, especially when you start looking at event counters, the numbers can be really large and it's very hard to, to even see a difference. Um, so what we have, we have other, an, another way of comparing data. You can look at ratios, where we show the ratio of the, the, the current um, column divided by the reference, and that's the first column. So what we see here, for example, the total uh, last level cash misses but for two threads, for some reason, that's only about 78%, 79% of, of the single thread. I have no idea why that is, but um, you can immediately get that kind of information. We have a third one that I'm not showing where, where we show you deltas. So with the, by just looking at the plus sign, you already know, oh, that's faster and that's slower. Um, so that's another kind of nice, uh, nice way to use the comparison. All right, there's a lot more to explore. I didn't talk about the call tree, more filters. You can get a lot of information from the experiments, customization, and I didn't say much about the event counter support. Um, I'm sort of going to wrap it up now. Um, our, our current directions are fix bugs and help people to get started. That's the main priority. 
And um, that's what we're doing. In the time that we have left, we are working on a GUI to display and analyze the data. And um, the work is in progress to, for that HTML-based system. Other things that we're looking at, but the list is actually longer. Um, more recent uh, su support for more recent processors, additional metrics, and for example, to attach to a running process so that you can intercept the job that's running, do some profiling, and then let go again. Uh, we certainly encourage your feedback and wishes. Please send it to the bin neutrals um, alias, and I can assure you that we'll take very quick action. Last but not least, the, um, I just want to show you a sneak preview of the GUI. I'm showing here a flame chart, what we call the timeline. You can zoom in and you can compare. I don't have time to go into that, and that's for later because it's uh, still work in progress. I just want to give you uh, the sneak preview. And that was my talk. So I'll switch on the camera again. And I hope we still have a few minutes for questions, so I'm more than happy to... Um, to answer questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, You're welcome. Ms. Florian has a uh, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll ask the obvious question. Mm -hmm. Why are you positioning this against gprof and not against perf, the Linux kernel tool? Well, yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, certainly, I, I don't. I see this tool as complementary to perf. I, I'm, I'm absolutely not interested in doing any sort of um, you know, competition there. I'm a performance person myself. Use use all the tools you can get. Perf is an excellent tool, use it, and hopefully you'll find our tool useful as well. I do think GProf has somewhat fallen behind. Um, I, did, um, I, I did some evaluation and I found that several things were just not, not up to speed, like uh, support uh, for multi-threading, for example, shared libraries. I think that pretty much every, every application out there yeah, uses those features. So, so the, the comparison with GProf is different than with Perf. Perf is, I use Perf myself. I mean, I think it's a great tool. Uh, Sergei, uh, uh, you're completely right that GProf is quite behind the time, times for shared libraries and for, uh, uh, for multi-threading. Uh, but things like uh, 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 only doing the, the flat, flat profile, uh, like you say, is uh, uh, an advantage of uh, GProf in G. Uh, uh, you can do that for GProf just fine. Uh, you don't compile with minus PG, you only link with it, and then you get that. So, so that works just fine. Uh, and that's, uh, that's, uh, you, 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 you get a lot better times that way. Uh, there's, there's a lot less overhead, uh, because, uh, recording the call, call craft, uh, uh, takes a lot of memory, but uh, that's the that's most, mo most important thing. It takes time, but it also takes memory in the executable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it so it changes the characteristics of what you're measuring. Right, right. Yeah, we we do a lot of the the pro, the, the processing is 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 post mortem. So the display text tool does does all that. We collect the data. Right. That's very quick. Uh, I found that the overhead of is is in the the single digit uh, percentages. Um, of course, it depends on your sampling granularity and uh, how many threads you have and those kind of things. But generally, the overhead is very modest. Um, but then uh, we start displaying the information and then yeah, we build up that information, like the call tree, for example. Right, but how, how can you do the call tree when you do not actually record the call tree? We do the we do the stack on unwind and we record more than just like the program counter when we when we okay. stop the program. Okay. Yeah. So you actually do record more. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And one of the things that's on our to do list is to actually uh, document that format because unfortunately that's not documented. It's in the source code. But um, yeah, I, I wish we had a document, but unfortunately uh, we don't have that yet. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time now, so yeah. I'll have to get to yeah, uh, Ulrich, please, uh, it's just 
five seconds because uh, um, Richard Wiener asks a few questions in the chat. So with Ruth's permission, oh. like why are we putting this in Binutils? Because we are using the disassembler, we are using other libraries from Binutils and we plan to use more of that. That's one reason. No. Also, we are not using the instrumentation from GCC at the moment, but that doesn't mean that we will not be using it. Also, we have some hopes for auto FDO in GCC to be actually uh, functional, so we can use the sample based results from GProfNG also to do profile guide optimizations in GCC. And yeah, it's similar to AMD UProf and Intel VTune and everything, but how many of those are free software, right? Actually, yeah, and, and the, cross platform. Yeah. Cross platform. Cross platform so, yeah. yeah. Not to mention that the Intel VTune, some little bit told me that was actually. The reaction of Intel to the Sun Studio uh, profiler analyzer. Again, as, analyzer. As, anyway, that was it. Yeah, thank people you. People doing performance, I think they, they want as many tools as they can get. So uh, we're not replacing anything in a way. Yeah, thank you.